After a two-day substance binge, Jake's lighter breaks and he can't find another in the house. Since his roommate won't answer his request to borrow one, Jake finally goes outside. When he makes it to the store, it's a complete mess and there aren't any employees, so he drops some money for the lighter and leaves. On his way back, he finally notices there isn't a single person or car on the streets, so he assumes it must be Christmas. As he reaches the park and finds no birds either, it's revealed this is day two of the incident. Suddenly Jake smells something nasty and is shocked to find a dead body under a park bench. After double-checking, he takes out his phone to call 911, only to notice one more body on another bench. Terrified, he runs to his family's house, but they won't open the door so he has to sneak through the back. He rushes upstairs and is disturbed to discover his father and stepmother are dead, so next he checks his half-sister's room, but she isn't there. Panicking, he keeps trying to use his phone only to get a recorded message mentioning a national emergency and asking people not to sleep. When he makes it to the living room, he finds a blanket fort indicating a sleepover. Jake looks inside and finds his sister and her friends dead as well. Disturbed, Jake runs outside and pukes before trying to blame this on the substance binge. He's suddenly interrupted by Sam, who confirms everything is real and tells him not to fall asleep because that's how people are dying. From then on, they start hanging out together and breaking into empty houses to enjoy themselves, using adrenaline injections to stay awake. They also make friends with some other survivors like Lily and Rachel, who have already lost their inhibitions by day 5. Eventually they decide to save the injections and the group turns to Sam's ADHD medicine. It keeps them awake, but the lack of sleep is clearly taking a toll on their bodies. Lily often has full shouting arguments with hallucinations and Rachel always tries to comfort her through it. One afternoon, Rachel leaves the room for just two seconds, and Lily ends up falling asleep. Jake tries to wake her up with an injection, but nothing happens. Rachel has a full breakdown and begins pointing out how medicine isn't working anymore, just like it happened with caffeine and cigarettes. She decides they need a stronger dose and leaves in a car to look for medicine while Jake and Sam cover Lily's body with a twister mat. Suddenly the guys notice Rachel left with the bag containing all the medicine they had, so they take another car to follow her. As they drive down the road at a very high speed, Jake starts falling asleep, so Sam has to take over the wheel and stop the car. Then Sam pushes Jake onto the passenger's seat and takes the driver's spot, going after Rachel again while driving really badly. Desperate to keep Jake awake as well, he grabs a screwdriver and stabs Jake in the leg. This immediately wakes Jake up and he sees an airplane in the sky, wondering if it's real. When their car is finally about to catch up to Rachel, the airplane appears around the corner, so Sam has to dodge it and stop the car right before they crash. Afterward the guys go to check on the pilot Ellis, who says he's been to 8 cities in 3 days and this is the first time he sees a kid. The plane is now broken, so Ellis shares some of his medicine with the guys and agrees to go with them to the nearest hospital. Once they get there, they find the bodies of many sick people, but also a bunch of survivors. Dr. Ally gives them some adrenaline and takes care of Jake's wound while explaining she's been trying to study the incident, but she has no answers yet. After checking the patient's files to confirm they all died at the same time, Ellis shares his story. He had been piloting a plane when the incident happened, and a doctor passenger who stayed awake also confirmed everyone died instantly at the same time as Ally's patients. Ellis visited many cities and always found people panicking while reporters shared the same time of death, however in Newark someone said two more seconds. With a theory in mind, Ellis started to fly further and check each hospital, noticing a difference of a second in each estate. By going down the numbers, he's trying to find the point of origin, which must be somewhere west from there. Jake, Sam, Ally, and her friend Sarah decide to go with him to find the answer. Then a flashback shows how the incident happened from Ally's point of view. Lots of sick people started to die in their beds and the night shift rushed to help them, but nothing was working. On day two, Ally started to ration the medicine and help the employees stay awake while they kept getting calls from desperate people asking for help and studying the bodies for any clues. On day three, Ally is devastated to see Dr. Lex leave in her car with hopes of finding anyone, but she never came back or answered the radio messages. Back to the present, Ally continues to check the car radio just in case. The group can't stop yawning so Sarah shares some ghost peppers, which are incredibly spicy and keeps everyone awake. After a few hours of driving, they see a big cloud of smoke and are upset to discover the local hospital has burned down, so they can't check the records. At that moment Jake remembers that this town is old-fashioned and keeps the morgue in the police station, so they head there. At the station, they're shocked to find a whole rave happening with all sorts of debauchery. When they try to enter the morgue, they're blocked by a man demanding a password. Ellis threatens him with violence and the group is allowed inside, but Sarah wants to have a break at the party. Jake tells the others to go ahead while he watches over her. While the duo dances, Ellis and Ally check the records, discovering the time of death was one second over, so they start crossing information on a map to find their next destination, Dallas. Sam finds the body cabinets and sees a raver choosing one to go to sleep, finally giving up. At that moment, Jake sees a hallucination of his sister and begins following her around the building, where a blonde raver reveals they're having the party there because of all the substances the police have confiscated through the years. 
The woman blows some happy powder at Jake's face and he runs away after seeing his old pipe in there. He suddenly starts hallucinating again and sees his sister with her entire room, triggering a conversation about Jake's family issues that make him uncomfortable. The sister starts crying and a bright light makes the hallucination disappear, so Jake rushes into another room. At the dance floor, Sarah finally realizes that she's been left alone and that she's lost her backpack with medicine, causing her to have a breakdown. Back to Jake, he now hallucinates about the time his sister visited him in jail and he learned his mother died. A furious Jake begins ranting against his father for mistreating his mom and when he hits the window, he snaps out of the hallucination and runs out again. After moving through the dancers, he enters another hallucination, during which he finds his sister's dead body in the blanket fort and clings to her, apologizing for not being there for her. He returns to reality for good when Sam finds him, and together they go searching for Sarah, only to find her dead on a chair. Ally is really upset by this and blames Jake for it, not wanting to hear him out. Ellis announces they can't trust him and wants to leave him behind, but Sam comes in Jake's defense and convinces the others to stick together. A few hours later, the radio finally picks up something. It's a message from Lex saying he's found the cure in Austin. Ellis still wants to find the point of origin though, so he leaves alone while Ellis, Jake, and Sam follow the recording. Another flashback shows Dave survived the night of the incident because he stayed up late to work. The next morning he had to bury his dog, then he started to consume substances like crazy while watching multiple screens at the same time, hoping for any news. He started losing his mind and even punched a mirror, hurting his hand and realizing pain kept him awake. By day three, he acquired multiple wounds to keep it up. By day four, Dave was covered in blood and nails as he wandered out of the house. When he saw a young girl on the street, he chased after her and pushed her to the ground to beat her up to death. Back to Ally's group, they're driving down the road when Jake gets distracted and accidentally hits something, causing the car to crash against a tree. Ally is bleeding and about to faint, so the guys take her out and throw some alcohol at her eyes to keep her awake. Sam rushes back to the car to search for water and on the mirror he notices someone watching them from a bridge, but when he looks up the person is gone. Jake realizes they hit a person who fell from the bridge, which doesn't make sense because it's easier to die by sleeping. Suddenly Ally throws up and hears a high-pitched noise, meaning she must have a concussion. The guys bandage her head and carry her weight as they take off. Sam mentions he saw someone and wonders if it was a killer, but Jake thinks there's no point in throwing off a body. After lots of walking, they reach a town and Ally pukes again as she hallucinates music. While Sam takes care of her, Jake goes looking for help and is disturbed to find a bunch of skulls hanging from trees. He also notices a person sneaking around with a painted face and when he tries to move away, he's blocked by a masked stranger. At the same time, Ally falls to the ground and almost faints, but the skull people find her just in time. Ally is taken to a church and given some homemade medicine that immediately snaps her awake. Father Julio explains his group is in the middle of a festival honoring the dead and apologizes for scaring them off with their games. The group is invited to stay for as long as they need and Julio introduces Sam to other kids his age. Ally inspects the ingredients that make the medicine and notices it includes worms, that's why it tastes so nasty. Sam befriends a girl named Carmen, who takes him to meet a blind man and the guide dog that stays awake to take care of his owner. Suddenly it starts barking furiously so the kids begin making their way back to the party. Suddenly Dave jumps on Carmen and stabs her, so Sam breaks a chair on his head. Before Dave can react, Julio opens fire, so Dave runs away. While a few people go after him, Julio takes Carmen inside, but Ally can't help much because the girl needs a surgeon and she isn't one. Her head also starts hurting as she hears the high-pitched noise again, so Julio does his best to calm her down. After drinking some medicine, Ally agrees to help and asks Julio and Sam to hold Carmen down to stitch her without anesthesia. In the meantime, a teenager is also found by Dave and killed in seconds. Back in the church, the power suddenly goes out so Julio has to go fix the generator. He notices some blood and follows it to open a door from which Dave comes out. A fight ensues and as the men throw each other around the room, Julio's gun goes off in the darkness. Ally and Sam hear the shot and take Carmen into the room with the praying candles, where they're found by Dave. He gets distracted when he notices the dog in the room and tries to connect with it, but the dog runs away instead. Crying, Dave is about to attack, but the dog brings Jake and he immediately starts beating Dave up with a pipe. Then Julio appears alive and well, happy to see the bad guy is dead. The next morning the group gets ready to leave in a new car and offers Julio to come along. However Julio refuses, explaining he sent two people to Austin two days ago and they never came back or called. As a goodbye gift, Julio gives Jake his gun. Meanwhile Ellis finally makes it to Dallas, which seems to be thriving. In a town nearby, Bill thinks he sees a bunch of people walking around that suddenly drop dead, but it's just a hallucination and he just keeps going. Sometime later, he leaves the town with his girlfriend Nicole and stop at a gas station, where they see a guy arrive and suddenly get shot. As bullets keep coming, the couple hides behind a car and Bill asks Nicole to keep an eye on the mirror while he stands up to cause the sniper to shoot again. Bill hides again just in time and Nicole can tell from which window in the neighboring building the shots came from. 
At that moment the lights go out and a man opens the door in the gas station, so the couple rushes to meet him as they dodge another bullet. Once the door is locked, the couple meets Ellis, who is working with hacker Jeffrey. He was the one to shut down the power. Ellis explains a bad guy is shooting at anyone who tries to reach the city, so they've been stuck there for days. Then they meet Beth, her brother John, and her husband Colin, who share some injections with them. When Bill and Nicole share the location of the sniper, Ellis decides it's time to finally confront them. While one of them runs outside to keep the sniper distracted, Ellis and Colin ambush her and make her step back. Her name is Meredith and she's a Marine. While Bill gives her an injection, she explains she only shoots down psychopaths and she tried shooting Bill and Nicole because she saw them with the other guy. The group still doesn't trust her, so she begins moving quickly to disarm Colin and Ellis, then she takes Colin hostage with a hidden gun. She asks them to let her walk freely and she'll be her guide through Dallas so they can find answers together, which they have no choice but to accept. Afterward they share the information they have. Bill and Nicole came to have the perfect date before dying. Jeffrey followed a bird, thinking it was an omen because the bird never stopped flying. Beth's family came here because during the night of the incident, she was woken up by a call from a number with Dallas area code and the initials SC. The voice said don't go to sleep right before the incident happened. Jeffrey tries to track down the number, but he discovers the internet is down although it was working an hour ago. Bill just uses the yellow pages and discovers the number belongs to Sandy Creek Nursing Home, which matches the initials, so they head there. The building is empty except for a bunch of dead bodies, but Meredith finds a security camera, so they check the recordings. Beth doesn't recognize anyone, and to their shock, nobody died at the time of the incident. Jeffrey points out that masking phone numbers is easy with current technology, and Ellis gets so angry he breaks a TV. This makes Bill realize something and he checks the video again. The emergency message appeared on TV at the exact moment of the incident, as if they were ready for it. The group decides their next destination is the broadcast station. At that moment Nicole almost falls asleep, but they snap her out just in time. Bill announces he's had enough and tells the group to go on without them. Suddenly Meredith takes out her gun and points out Bill gave her his injection, yet Nicole is the one fading. In fact she never saw Bill take anything to stay awake. Bill explains he has fatal familial insomnia, a rare condition that makes it impossible for him to fall asleep and will kill him in a year. It also causes hallucinations and delirium. Meredith thinks he's the perfect guy for missions right now, but he still chooses to leave with Nicole. The couple has a great dinner and enjoys a movie at the theater, where Nicole finally lets go. When the group makes it to the station, they wander around in the darkness until a bright light is suddenly turned on at their faces. A male voice tells them to leave or he'll open fire, so Meredith shoots the light to prove he's bluffing. They meet news anchor Alonzo, who explains he wasn't in the station the night of the incident and the emergency message was already on when he got there. For the past few days he's been trying to keep people informed with his team, who are now dead. Ellis' theory is that the emergency signal is causing the deaths, so he forces Alonzo to show them how to shut the station down. Meanwhile Ally's group makes it to Austin and stops by a mysterious building. They see a bunch of people run out and some guards shooting at them, so Jake suspects these people caught Lex and made her send a message about a fake cure to attract more victims. Ally still wants to make sure, so they make a plan. They approach the building in their underwear to look weak and innocent, and two guards confirm Lex is there with them and let them in. After they get clean, Ally reunites with Lex, revealing they're a couple. They share a kiss but Ally also slaps her for leaving without telling her. Then Lex tells them about the cure, giving Sam an injection that instantly puts him to sleep. He starts dreaming about the night of the incident, during which he stayed up late to watch a dirty movie. His dad soon came home and sent him to his room to then fall asleep on the couch. All the dreaming causes Sam to talk and move in his sleep, and Lex explains bad dreams are part of the medicine's effects. She'll bring him out in 10 minutes before it gets dangerous, meaning it's not really a permanent cure, it just buys them time. Ally and Jake also end up getting a dose, and Jake starts dreaming about Sarah, who tries to teach him how to dance. They're interrupted by the blonde raver and his sister, who insist he should tell Sarah he was responsible for her death. His sister starts showing him bodies and reveals Lily, who also blames him for her death, and even Sam. At that moment, Jake's heart rate starts going up and his body begins shaking. Lex and Ally try to stabilize him, but soon his line goes flat. As Ally cries for him, Lex thinks she's had enough and uses a gun to self-delete, but it turns out this is Ally's dream. When she wakes up, everyone is fine and well. Afterward Lex and a guard meet with Dr. Abrams, the very rude leader who explains he needs more test subjects. The guard points out last time she went to town to look for volunteers they didn't like it much, so Abrams tells her to use force if necessary. Back in Dallas, Alonzo guides Jeffrey and John to the generator and Colin to the power switches using a radio. Once the batteries are out, Ellis tries pressing a button to disable everything for good, but an alarm starts ringing and all doors get locked, trapping the team. Meredith tries to shoot the door, but the lockdown is bulletproof. Alonzo manages to get out of the room before the door closes and looks for his cigarettes to stay awake through pain as he confesses he guided them wrong on purpose because he thinks people need his voice, so the broadcast shouldn't be shut down. 
At that moment Colin jumps on Alonzo and starts beating him up, but Alonzo manages to grab a pen and stabs his neck before choking him to death with a mouse cable. With a plan in mind, John and Jeffrey turn the generator back on, opening the doors. Alonzo sits in front of the camera to read the news, and Beth shoots him in the head on national TV then Jeffrey fries the whole electricity system, finally cutting the transmission. Now they have to decide who will fall asleep to test it. A flashback shows Jeffrey hanging out with his friends after the incident and how the bird landed on their table to caw at them. Remembering this in the present, Jeffrey volunteers for the test. He falls asleep pretty quickly and soon stops breathing, so the others rush to give him an injection. Unfortunately it does nothing and Jeffrey dies. Beth freaks out because John died for nothing and decides she'll go to sleep, so Meredith rushes after her to stop her. Refusing to give up, Ellis continues to analyze the situation and John points out that the signal is stuck in the satellites now, ghosting. To actually stop it, they would have to bring down the whole satellite network, which they could do from the NASA Space Center in Houston. Ellis goes to tell the women about the new plan only to discover John is with them, meaning he's been hallucinating. Meredith has decided she also wants to sleep, so Ellis agrees to escort them to a hotel to go out with style. Back in Austin, a furious Slade is getting weapons ready because he wants revenge against Abrams for killing his son. Then he kidnaps a woman and starts hurting her with a hammer to make her confess how to get into the facility. Meanwhile Lex runs some tests on Sam's blood and informs him he has a mutation that makes him need little sleep. Lex mentions Abrams has some more testing in mind, and Sam agrees to help. Later while Jake is looking for Sam, he finds a room with boxes filled with children's clothing and even accessories belonging to the guys sent by Father Julio. At the same time, Ally is checking the x-rays of the test subjects and notices most of them are children's brains, which is weird because she hasn't seen any kids in the facility. Jake enters the room as well to bring proof that they're killing children and Lex defends the experiment, explaining only children can take it and it's for the greater good. Jake and Ally ask Lex about Sam and they run to find him, stopping Abrams' injection just in time and telling the boy about all the dead kids. Sam changes his mind about volunteering and tries to leave, but Abrams grabs him as he points out they're all going to die soon anyway so his experiments can't be blamed for the deaths. A furious Jake threatens to beat Abrams down with a fire extinguisher and Abrams lets Sam go, but when they turn around, they find their way blocked by Lex and two guards. Ally is upset to learn it was Lex who pressured Sam into this but before they can discuss it, they hear a shot and the guards' radios inform them someone dangerous has breached the facility. As people panic and run all over the building, Slade shoots a bunch of guards until he manages to corner Jake, Ally, and Sam. Seeing a kid makes him freeze, and he allows them to escape. While the trio runs away, Slade finds Abrams, who tries to use logic to point out he technically didn't commit any murder. Slade yells at him for trying to use fancy words to distract him and tells him to shut up, so Abrams writes on some paper don't let your son die in vain and you will kill the rest of your friends. When Abrams says they could help humanity together and offers his hand, Slade puts down his weapon, only for Abrams to inject him with a new medicine, which instantly kills him. Outside, the trio gets in the car, and Lex approaches them to explain again that this is being done for the greater good and those kids would have died anyway. Ally asks her to come with her, but Lex refuses and takes out a gun, telling Ally to go back inside. At that moment Jake appears behind Lex with a gun too and quickly disarms her while Ally breaks up with her. Then the trio drives away, and Sam reveals he stole some medicine that should keep them awake for a while before they decide to go to Dallas to reunite with Ellis. Speaking of Ellis, he's at a hotel recording a message for Ally's group, saying goodbye before getting ready with the others to go to sleep. The next morning, Meredith wakes up, which she already knew would happen. After making a radio call to a team that has been waiting for her, she sees Jeffrey's bird and talks to it as if she knew it, saying they're going home. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.